Hey folks, time for another quick video. This time let's talk about polymorphic serialization using system text JSON. So before getting into how to do it, I would like just to quickly address why we would want to do it. If you already know why you want to do it, feel free to jump ahead. But basically, my idea, at least when I want to use it, it's not because I want very complex type hierarchies to just, just be serialized and stuff like that. Not really. So a couple of the main use cases I have, which are basically the same, but apply to different types of situations is, for example, if we have an API and let's imagine it's a store API, a computer store API, and we have an endpoint to list all the, all the computer parts. So in that case, we don't want or better yet, a common way to list all possible computer parts and all their pos possible capabilities would be to have a single type of DTO, which has all the properties and some of them will be null in the cases there where it doesn't make sense for the specific type of computer part. An alternative, which I like a bit better, is have multiple DTOs representing the actual computer part all of them inherit from computer part. It's an ESA relationship, so it makes sense. And they can have only the properties that make sense for their case, instead of having just one giant TTO where we need to go through. So that's one possibility, and I use that often. Another possibility is, for example, if we want to store something in a database, in a call, for example, using Postgres, and we want to store uh, in a, a JSON column some some information again the same thing as the DTO we might have a hierarchy with a user relationship where we want to use it and another possibility for example when using uh, an event driven architecture where we want to publish events maybe we want to publish different types of events to the same topic because they're related to the same entity for for example let's imagine uh, that store that we had when the user places an order pays the order, uh, cancels the order, stuff like that. These are all events related to the same order, so we probably want to push them into the same topic, but they might have different information. So in that case, we can make use of this polymorphic serialization. Uh, in this case with JSON, also pro possible with other kinds of things like Avro, Protobuf, stuff like that. Today we are talking about uh, JSON. So how can we do it with system text JSON? So uh, with Newton soft JSON, it was built in. With system text JSON, not yet. Uh, there are GitHub issues for this support to be included. So far, it hasn't been done. Maybe at some point it will be. But right now, it isn't. But it's not super hard to edit. It's probably hard to and this is with the great performance that we are expecting from system text JSON, but some rudimentary approaches work. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Not something very complex, just a couple of options um, that are easy enough to implement. So starting, let's start with serialization and I'll comment the code about the deserialization part because that's an interesting thing. So. We, we use converters to, to implement this, but as, I, as you're seeing, I'm com commenting the converter part, just to show you, if we serialize this hierarchy, so if I show you the hierarchy, it's basically we have a hierarchy root, which has a shared property, has a type, which I'll talk about in a minute, have a, an A, type that inherits from hierarchy root and has another property and the B which also inherits from hierarchy root and that's another property. So as we can see the serialization part is missing the specific property. But if I should go here and instead of hierarchy root array I put object array 
and I run this again. Now you can see that the property is here. So the serialization part, it's already done. If uh, as long as we can, we use the actual object or cast to object, it just works. It doesn't work if we provide it with the, the hierarchy root because then it will serialize for that type only. So for, for implementing this, now we start the converter. I have this converter here, which depends, although not for the serialization part, not so important, but I have an interface I type discriminator just to force these DTOs to have a property type. So for serialization, this is not relevant. It's important for deserialization because we need to know what is the type that we need to deserialize. So I use this type discriminator. Then implemented this converter, which is the common approach to customize the JSON serialization process in system text JSON. We inherit from JSON converter, in this case of T, and it needs to be of type I discriminator. I'll get back to this part later. But we can see the right, I'm just using the JSON serializer and casting the value to object to have that implementation that we saw, just casting to object and it does it by itself, we don't need to do anything. So this solves our problem for the serialization. Now for this serialization, we need to use that type that is present in the iType discriminator to know which type. So to do this, again, this is just one possible implementation. You can do it in many other ways. But what I'm doing is getting the type T and creating a map from the string type representation to the actual type, So as you can see here. So just a bit of reflection to get this. You could do it in other ways. And then to read this, you can see we start, this is just sanity check. We're checking that the token type is a start object. It should be because if we are expecting the type T, uh, it should be a start object. Uh, it could also be like a collection in this case, not really because, or maybe yes, we could create a collection that inherit from iType discriminator. So maybe I need to add some additional checks, but anyways, this is a sanity check. Then what we do is we parse the whole thing so that we then can get the property type. Keep this in mind, we'll get back to this in a moment. But with the type in hand, we can get the actual discriminator, head to the discriminator type map and obtain the actual type. So then we can call deserialize for a real with the actual type. So now it knows how to deserialize correctly and get all the, the properties. So if I run this again, let me just uncomment this. This is reading this sample JSON, which as you can see has a type, a shared property and a specific A property. And this has a specific B property. So if I run this, you can see that it deserialized things correctly. Got all the properties here and I'm using this serialize I read only collection of hierarchy root. So it's working. It's not super complex. Of course, if you never saw these system text JSON APIs, it will be strange, but after going through the docs and stuff like that, we can find a way to implement this. Works well enough. Might can be extended, probably some improvements, but works well enough. But now, and this is, I was going to say a big but, but it's not a big but. I've been using this, not having problems, but it's important to note that this, just having this, it seems that it's not a lot, but it does as, uh, have an impact on performance. So it's not for free. As we can see here, I created these benchmarks and in terms of serialization, there's not much problem because as we saw, the implementation of the serialization part is just forwarding it, makes a cast and forwards it. But for non-polymorphic deserialization, we are seeing something like 21 milliseconds, while the basic implementation that I showed you has 44 and has more allocations. 
So I didn't dive too deep, but my guess is that it's related mainly with this line here as we are parsing the value just so we can get the type and then later we can deserialize. So, as I said, it might, depending on the needs of your application, it might not be a big problem. But if your application can, can use all the possible performance, then you need to keep in mind that this is an issue. So, one thing we can see here, I have another implementation here that's using the um, slightly tweaked, as the name implies. And this is slightly lower level while still not being something very optimized. So the rest of the code is the same, but the read is slightly different. Here, instead of reading the whole thing, parsing the whole thing to then get the type, I'm doing it manually. I'm going uh, property by property until I reach the type. So ideally, if the type is closer to the one of the first properties that is included, it will be faster. So I won't bore you with details. You can check out the code later. But basically, we're going, checking token type, getting the property, get the property name. If it's type, then we try to read it. If it's not, we read on, we skip the value, and then we continue to the next property until we find the type. And then with the type, we can just deserialize the thing. And as you can see, this optimization improved a bit. So from 21 was 44, and now it's 34. So it's not as good as the non-polymorphic, but it's better. Now, this is a slight optimization, but this is a hint for you that there are many possibilities to improve. For example, we could try to force type to be always the first property, so it would always be faster to get the type and then parse the thing. It will always have an impact, but there are ways where we can make it better to minimize this impact. Depends on your use case, if you need that extra perf or not. So I'll leave that up to you. And hopefully this gives you some ideas of what things you can do, not only in terms of performance, but other kinds of implementation. As I showed you, I'm only using this high type discriminator and I'm assuming the type, the type name comes here. You can do things other ways. You can use attributes, stuff like that. There are multiple options. So go ahead, try stuff out. But my idea here was just to provide you some basic building blocks that you can, can look for the docs and do better. And hopefully it is useful because I've seen questions asked regarding polymorphic deserialization. So if the basic might work for you, if not, look into it further, but otherwise the basic can be a good option if it's not a performance critical uh, situation. Uh, and that's it. So as usual, hopefully it was useful. Drop a like if it was, comment with questions, share with people, and let me know what you, what you think. And well, hopefully the .NET team or someone implements a better version of this than what I did. And that's all. Hope to see you in the next one. See you.